It can get lonely climbing Mount McKinley. So to entertain myself, I go to ChumbaCasino.com. At Chumba Casino, I can play hundreds of online casino style games for free. Like online slots, bingo, slingo, and more. Plus, I get a daily login bonus. It's just too bad that up here, I don't have anyone to share my excitement with. Woohoo! Woohoo! Live the Chumba life. Anytime, anywhere. Play for free now at ChumbaCasino.com. BGW Group. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Shop early. Save big. All month long during Black Friday buildup at Lowe's. Right now, get select pre-lit artificial Christmas trees starting at just $59.98. Don't wait to save. Shop these deals today. In store or online. Because Lowe's knows deals. Discount taken at time of purchase. While supplies last. Selection varies by location. In Louisiana, a woman jumps from a police car into the Mississippi River from the Mississippi River Bridge after a domestic situation. In Texas, a driver is nearly killed after a spear was thrown through her windshield and... In Miami, a hyper-successful real estate broker is sentenced to prison for using COVID-19 relief funds to buy a Bentley. These stories and more coming at you today, Monday, August 28th, on Real Life or a Crime Daily, and I'm Jim Chapman. And I'm Woody Overton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Monday, Monday, boys. Yep. yep. Back to the yep. grind. Yep. Let's pick the energy level up. Our fans expect a lot. That's right. And we give them a lot. Yep. Or your fans right. and my <laughs> tolerators. <laughs> <laughs> you have a couple, Mike. Well, I have the aglets, and then I have tolerators. And then I have yeah. a few piglets that are not happy oh, with their name God. designation. And I apologize for that. That was not meant as a negative. I'm a big fan of piglets, but we're considering a name change for you all. Yeah. Well, we'll okay. get in. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We'll get into some crime time in the meantime. How about that? And crime time. got a crazy story out of uh, out of Louisiana, and that is the West Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office is working to upgrade procedures after a woman who requested assistance attempted suicide. Deputies from the uh, West Baton Rouge Sheriff's Office responded to a domestic situation on Saturday around 4.30 in the morning. A woman asked de- deputies to take her somewhere in Baton Rouge to get her away from where she was. During the drive, the woman was not in handcuffs because she was not under arrest. She asked the driver to roll the window down to get some fresh air. With the window down, the woman stuck her hand out, opened the door from the outside, and deputies said she got out of the unit while on the Mississippi River Bridge. After a struggle, deputies got her back into the unit, but she was able to escape again and jumped from the bridge. The woman hit the water, but lived and was picked up by a nearby boat. She was taken to the hospital and may face charges. Now, the West Baton Rouge Parish Sheriff's Office is reviewing procedures for transporting people not in custody uh, those changes that they're looking into possibly doing have not been released. But from what I understand or what I've heard is on the way to Baton Rouge, she told them she wanted some fresh air. Uh, being kind deputies, they rolled down the window for her to get that fresh air, and that's how she was able to stick her hand out, open the door, jump out, and eventually jump over the bridge, wow. off the bridge, rather. I, I, I'm a it has to be the low end of the old bridge because that's like 150 feet, y'all. That's high. I mean, that's like hidden semen. I don't know how the hell she lived. I guess you can't kill bad grass. I don't know. I mean, hopefully they'll get her just like that the help she needs. Yeah. So, yeah. Man, that's for the listeners out there who don't know, that is a long ass drop. Man, uh, I, I don't want to know if anybody that's ever jumped off the bridge and lived. I was going to ask you that. So, it, nope. so that's not a thing that happens around here where people sneak out there and do the do the jump because if you know how to do it, you're. Oh, they do it. They do it. It happens all the time, and they find cars abandoned on the top of the bridge where people go up there and they jump off, but all of them die. 
Yeah. I mean, 150 feet, shit. I don't even know how many stories. Is that 15 stories or something? Yeah. That's a long yeah. way. It's yeah. way up there. So if you give somebody a ride, you, know, you should put them in handcuffs behind their back regardless in a, in a marked unit. So, uh, even if they're not under uh, arrest? I would. Fuck, I mean, I'm not going to have them. I'm damn sure not going to roll the window down. and, and <laughs> <That's, open> the <laughs> door. Yeah. Especially when they're under duress like that. Even even if she's trying to get away from something, uh, being under duress like that and stressed, yeah, uh, wow. you know you you don't know what they're gonna fucking do. But anyway, this one is a bit disturbing and just sad. Uh, a federal judge sentenced a 68 year old dentist who killed his wife during a hunting trip in Africa to life in prison and ordered him to pay millions of dollars in restitution and other fines. Lawrence Rudolph will serve life in prison for murder and a concurrent 20 year sentence for defrauding the life insurance company. Mm-hmm. Judge William Martinez also ordered him to pay almost 4.9 million in restitution, a $2 million fine and a $200 special assessment. Right. Because the two hundred dollars really going to hurt after you're paying six point nine million. But anyway, Rudolph and his girlfriend Lori Milleron were convicted in August of twenty twenty two. Though she was found guilty of accessory after the fact to murder, obstruction of justice, and two counts of perjury, she was sentenced to seventeen years in prison in June. On October eleventh of twenty sixteen, Rudolph shot his wife Bianca Rudolph through the heart with a 12-gauge shotgun that was enclosed in a soft shell case on the last day of a scheduled hunt, scheming to make the murder look like an accident. The two were hunting in Zambia for a hunting trip. Rudolph said his wife died when she put the shotgun away and it accidentally discharged. At the sentencing hearing, her brother said Rudolph would die alone and unmourned, adding even Judas would be afraid to be in your company. Oh, my God. Wow. So I, I guess the insurance policy must be a full four point nine million, right? Yep. Uh, uh, and rest, restitution. And you know, this guy apparently these are wealthy people because, uh, I, to my knowledge, there's trips to Africa to hunt. Oh yeah. Cheap. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expensive, and and I mean, he planned it out. And, uh, wow, crazy. I don't know. Just divorce him. Right. I mean, uh, it seems like the easier like, path, but less and less people are taking yeah. it these days. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Well, Mike, do you want to tell us about your divorce story again of the roster, the, the chick from Auburn, Alabama, or whatever, that went to the island? You know, the one that you told about <laughs> 20, 20 times. <laughs> I could do another That's poem it. about it if you like. No, I actually, I, I enjoyed the poems. That made me laugh. Go ahead. Still I'm, sorry. I'm working on a limerick. Yeah, okay. <laughs> limerick. That'll be later in the week. You done? All right. Is that the end of your story? Yep, that, that's it. Sorry. Going to Mississippi. I don't. Yep. I don't often do Mississippi stories, but I'm going to do a Mississippi story, and this one is just. Sometimes the judgment of the police is not what the judgment of the police should be. A Mississippi cop is out of a job after police arrested and jailed a 10-year-old boy they found urinating in a parking garage. Hmm. All right. Police have are facing a torrent of criticism for their heavy-handed treatment of young Quantavius Eason because pictures circulated of the shame-faced child in the back of a police car heading to jail. Police chief Richard Chandler admitted it was an error in judgment in hauling the boy off to jail. But as pressure mounted, he has revealed that one officer involved is, quote, no longer employed and other officers will be disciplined for ignoring the department's policies and training. We appreciate the public's patience while we investigated this incident. He wrote on the department's Facebook page, we deeply value your trust and support, and we are dedicated to continually improving and learning from our mistakes. The boy's mother, Latanya Eason, said the officer who caught her son interrupted her meeting. So she had, the kids were uh, were in the car while she was inside in a 
in a short meeting. They interrupted her meeting to tell her uh, that uh, that he was going to uh, let Quantavius off with just a warning. So, so the the cop went, interrupted her meeting, said, "Look, we found your son. He was uh, urinating in the parking lot, and we've spoken to him, and believe he understands, you know, the wrong here, and uh, and I'm going to let him go with just that warning." So she thought everything was. Okay, but she says that that cop had a change of heart when other cops showed up on the scene. I don't know how many cops need to be at a 10 year old's urination arrest. Uh, When those guys showed up on the scene, the lieutenant became furious and demanded that the kid be taken to the station and issued a statute for being uh, uh, for the crime. So uh, so Eason went to the parking lot to find her son explaining that I was like, son, why did you do that? And Quantavius told her he decided to relieve himself after his sister, who was also in the car, told him that uh, there was no bathroom inside of the office his mother was at. And she responded, well, you should have known better than that. Of course, there was a bathroom there. So his sister was just playing with him. But the loan officer there at the time again, was satisfied that he could leave things, uh, you know, with the mother to, to just address. But then this senior officer arrived on the scene and overruled the guy, deciding that it was appropriate to hit this kid. And they called child services. And once you make that call, an official appearance in court is required. So when Chief Chandler issued this lengthy explanation I read at the beginning, you know, the backlash gathered strength in the town of around 8,100. This town is uh, Senatobia, I believe it's called, uh, 40 miles south of Memphis. He said the child was not handcuffed, but that under the Youth Court Act, a referral um, has to be issued against a 10-year-old if they commit acts that would be illegal if they were an adult. So, I mean, they put this poor 10-year-old kid, and the picture is just so sad, and you can see how scared this little kid is, and he had to go to the bathroom really bad, and his sister's effing with him, saying there's no bathroom inside, and his mother's inside and doesn't know what's going on, so what do you do if you're a boy? Uh, I, you either pee right. in your pants in your mother's car, or you get out of the car and pee in the parking lot. It, I, right. Crazy. Yeah, that's that's stupid. Uh, I ask. Well, and then there was it. so much pressure that they ended up, you know, having to fire the cop. Yeah, well, uh, strange. I mean, I mean I, I've had cases where I mean, not 10 year olds, but I you know, call kids doing whatever and I call the parents out and then the parents are really, really pissed off and they want to beat that ass. I'm saying, like, hold on, let me, uh, let me leave the scene. You do it. You got to do it as a parent, right? But I don't know. I mean, he could have had to pee. Hell, Woody peed in the parking garage yesterday. What's he talking about? <laughs> that, would, that would not <laughs> shock me in the least. Yeah. I have peed in a few parking garages in my day and yeah. everywhere else. Right? Look, I've had I've had my kids in the car scream, "Dad, pull over!" You know, like yeah, you know, there's right. you, yeah, that was, you know, that was sometimes you think you're going to time it right, but if you can't make it to the next rest area or exit, you're pulling over on the interstate and. They're letting one go. That guy's got no business being a police officer making a decision Uh, like that, I can tell you. I agree. Horrible. All right, so we talk about human trafficking a lot on uh, Real Life, Real Crime Daily. It's become such a problem, and uh, and we are trying to raise awareness for that. You know, awareness is kind of half the battle with these things. I'm going to tell you about a a case here that that is really – Really strange, and this is related to Madalena Kojikari. Uh, Madalena Kojikari was last seen getting off a North Carolina school bus in November. A missing North Carolina girl's grandmother appeared outside a courthouse last week and told reporters that she believes her 12 year old granddaughter was kidnapped and trafficked. Madalena Kojikari was last seen at her school in late November of 2022, but her mother and stepfather did not report the then 11-year-old girl missing until December 15th of that year. Last week, they both pled not guilty 
to failure to report a missing child to police. The missing girl's grandmother told reporters outside the courthouse that her granddaughter is alive, but she's been kidnapped. She then proceeded to accuse the daughter's husband of trafficking the child, along with the child's mother, his wife, for $5 million. He stalked, them, he stalked them for two years. He had no documents in, in his home. He stole their documents and held them in the home like prisoners. Recently unsealed search warrants suggest Diana, the child's mother, and Radika, the child's father, contacted a distant relative asking if he would help in smuggling Diana and Madalena from their home just north of Charlotte before Madalena disappeared. She told them she was in a bad relationship with the father, Christopher Palameter, and wanted a divorce. Diana told police last year that she had not seen her daughter since she went to her bedroom the night of November 23rd around 10 p.m. after she and her husband, Christopher, got into an argument. On November 24th, Christopher drove to his relative's home in Michigan to recover some items after an argument with Diana. Diana said she went into her daughter's room around 1130 that next morning to discover the 11-year-old was gone. Now, security camera camera footage from a school bus showed the girl exiting the bus on November 21st, the last day Madalena, a sixth grader, showed up for school, and that was around 5 p.m. Both parents were adamant that they did not know where Madalena could be. The idea that he could have uh, been in his home for three weeks and not know that she was missing is laughable. This from the prosecutors. And authorities are asking anyone with information on Madalena's whereabouts to contact the police. The FBI is also involved in the search for the missing girl. Uh, just a absolutely insane situation there where it looks like, I mean, the, all the accusations are that the father uh, was put up his daughter. Yeah. And, and so two things that I got kind of lost on there. So, so they tried to sell that they didn't know she was missing for three weeks. No, they knew they told the cops. They didn't know. They told the cops. They didn't know. But so I'm saying they tried to sell to the cops that they didn't know. Yes. And where's the $5 million thing? What? Well, this is the grandmother is saying, saying, uh, brought up the monetary money, five million dollars, and not really sure where she gets, uh, where she gets that figure from. But, uh, but that's what she said outside the courthouse. I'm a, I'm a guy from an old investigator standpoint, and as horrible as this sounds, I really hope they did sell that baby because the alternative is. You're they right. killed her, and and it, 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 if they sold her, at least the FBI had a chance of getting it back. But yeah, I don't believe that. I, and you're not getting five million for anybody. So that probably is just a grandmother's number and in in her state of grief or anger or whatever. Right. But either way, it's, it's a horrible story. Um, but you better believe you haven't heard the last of it. Absolutely, but, and we'll post we'll post a picture of. Uh, I actually have the picture. Uh, from the security footage from the school bus the last time she was seen. I'm going to post it. Who knows? Somebody out there may recognize this. Right, yeah. Young girl. Send it to me, and I'll get, I'll get it up on our TikTok, too. Spark something uncommon this holiday with just the right gift from Uncommon Goods. The busy holiday season is here, and Uncommon Goods makes it less stressful with incredible hand-picked gifts for everyone on your list, all in one spot. Gifts that spark joy, wonder, delight, and that's exactly what I want it feeling. Hey, y'all, I ordered a super cool piece. It's a candle with a sculpture of an LSU Tiger Stadium on top of it. And each officially licensed laser-cut wooden replica features up to four layers of detail, creating a bird's-eye view of a specific football field, seating section, and more. And every label includes your stadium's name, the team's logo, and school location. And it has a coconut soy vegan wax infused with sandalwood smell that creates tailgates and touchdowns scent profile, reminiscent of game day. 
It's invigorating like fresh cut grass and nostalgic like smoke from a pregame grill and calming like the crisp autumn air of a new semester on campus. Y'all, I love it. I have it at the base of my TV and I'm ready to watch the Tigers play on Saturday night, right? Uncommon Goods. Look, when you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. And many of their handcrafted products are made in small batches. So shop now before they sell out this holiday season. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade or made in the U.S. They have the most meaningful, out-of-the-ordinary gifts anywhere. They even have gifts you can personalize. From holiday hosts and hostess gifts to the coolest finds for kids, to hits for everyone from the book lovers to diehard sports fans, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone, not the same old selection you can just find anywhere. And with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give $1 to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated more than $3 million to date. So to get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C. That's uncommongoods.com slash R-L-R-C for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. Hey, y'all. Changing my wardrobe from summer to fall, it's never easy. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high-quality items I adore. Ensure my wardrobe stays fresh and I don't blow my budget. And there's nothing easier than going to Quince and choosing these high-quality items, like cashmere sweaters from $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops, and so much more. The best part? All Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman, the passes and savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes, and I love that. I got the stainless steel Link Apple Watch band from $59.90. It, it's heavy duty. It's awesome, and it's like $100 less than I could find anywhere else. And I also got a 100% organic Cotton Fisherman quarter zip-up sweater. The color is alabaster. Man, I can't wait to wear that this fall. And Cindy got the Mongolian cashmere boat neck sweater in Heather Gray. And I'm telling you, these are classic pieces at a fraction of the price. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high-quality closet essentials. Go to quince.com slash R-L-R-C for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash R-L-R-C to get free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash R-L-R-C. You'll thank me later. Oh, that's crazy. Um, y'all, lighten it up just a little bit. And, uh, Good. Uh, you like chicken wings? I do. I love chicken wings. Mike? Depends what kind. Yeah, well, I, I, some, I tried them all over the country, and some of them suck really bad, and some of them are just fire, right? So, yes. Kind of like rushing your leg, you never know what you're going to get. But let me tell you about this this Florida chicken wing restaurant. It's outside of Orlando, and five women intentionally clogged a toilet inside the restaurant over the weekend, igniting a brawl the, the, between the group and employees. The incident began around 9 p.m. Saturday at Papa B's in Longwood, a suburb of Orlando. I've been to Papa I, B's. Been, Papa B's is great. Well, there you go. Well, yeah, I might have to check that next time I'm in Orlando. Uh, so, at Papa B's, a supervisor told authorities that women stuffed a restroom toilet with wads of toilet paper, like the other story, right? Women were blamed because they were the only customers inside the restaurant. And then an employee went in and cleaned the bathroom. However, one of the women went inside the bathroom afterward. And the toilet was stuffed with toilet paper again. I mean, what kind of upbringing do these people have? But anyway, according to the police, the restaurant supervisor told the women they needed to leave since it was almost closing time. And then the supervisor found out the toilet was clogged again. And the group of women became irate and began yelling. When they were told to leave, one of the women punched the supervisor in the face. And another woman joined in kicking 
punching, pulling hair, and throwing things. The supervisor sustained a cut behind her ear, bruises on her leg and arm, and when another employee rushed to help the supervisor, one of the women slapped her and began to throw chairs. The fight was eventually broken up by other store employees. As the women fled, they allegedly knocked over chairs and threw salt and pepper shakers. They were detained by the cops and, you know, I mean, read these assholes' names. They're 18, 19, 24, 26, and 20. And they've been charged with disorderly conduct, battery, and criminal mischief. <laughs> I mean, that's like, you just, you're going to clog the toilet twice. This is bad enough. And, 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 and then you get in a fist of cuffs and then the, your part of glance as you're going out the door, like, I'm going to show you, motherfucker, I'm going to throw a salt and pepper shaker at you, too. And whatever. That's but, like just that, out, of, that, out of pure boredom. <laughs> it's, I, it's I, mean, just, I mean, I mean, how, how were you raised? Can't you find something better to do? I, uh, Mike, did that happen when you were there? Uh, I was kidding. I'd never been to this place. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, but, I mean, to be so bored that you're thinking of what can we do to F with the people in this uh, chicken right, wing joint yeah. right now. Oh, let's go clog the toilet. <laughs> let's, go flood the, let's go flood the floor so this person making minimum wage has to go clean it up and then do it again. Yeah. Well, yeah. they could be out doing worse things uh, like happens in my next story. Right. A Texas motorist was left reeling after a spear came crashing through her windshield in a seemingly random attack that has police at a loss. Her name, Siobhan Canales, is a 36-year-old mother from San Antonio. She whipped out her cell phone to record the incident's aftermath to show how close she came to dying with this warlike weapon. The, the clip was posted to TikTok where it garnered more than 8 million views with users expressing disbelief at what they are seeing. I've got a picture. We're going to post the picture. I mean, this is uh, this unbelievably big, sharp spear that goes right through uh, the windshield. Behind the, the camera, Canalis is heard saying, quote, I almost died. Uh, and she's right next to the five-foot spike, which stopped within inches of where she had been sitting. You could see where the, the tip of the spear uh, ends and uh, where she would have been sitting. And so, I mean, it's coming through your windshield at you, and the spear stops literally inches from going into your head. Crazy. A first responder is seen expressing similar sentiments as he pulls the spear from her windshield, telling her that she could count her blessings that she's alive. Calling the attack, quote, completely random, Canales also says that she'd been going 40 45 miles per hour when the spear shattered the glass within inches of her face. Local cops said Tuesday that they have no suspects, but added that the case is under investigation as an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. I heard an explosion and I ducked down. And when I looked up, the whole spear was there, said Canales, who'd been driving to a friend's house at 915 in the evening on Sunday. Uh, one clip in the, uh, in the uploaded video in which the Texas mom remarks, to her more than 5,000 followers, how she almost died, shows the weapon still lodged in the same place it had stopped during the scare. So I've got, uh, I got pictures of, uh, of both Canalis and this, uh, this spear, and this is a mean, I mean, unbelievable. I, I don't know who chucks that. I don't know where they chuck it from. Uh, I would think they could kind of figure out from the angle that it enters the windshield at where it came from, maybe some kind of uh, overpass or something. Yeah, but, but, but God, uh, people are throwing yeah. spears at cars. That is crazy. I mean, who has a spear to begin with? Yeah. yeah. And it, uh, you know, you hear about them throwing, bro, dropping bricks yeah. from, uh, from overpasses and yeah. you know, some just evil, man. Evil. That's stupid. How do you walk through the neighborhood with a big ass spear to get you know to, to throw it out and get? It? Well, and it looks like it's pretty unique, so maybe it will be pretty easily searchable. Um, I mean, yeah. there can't be too many things out there like this sold. I don't know, right. so maybe maybe that'll uh, give them a leg up on figuring out who did this. But it's uh, it's awful. It's 
interesting. But luckily, she did not get killed. There you go. All right. Don't worry about it. We're going to go to Florida, and a Miami real estate broker was sentenced to three and a half years in prison after she pleaded guilty to wire fraud charges related to misusing COVID-19 relief funds. Daniela Rendon, uh, 31, was charged with seven counts of wire fraud, two counts of money laundering, and a count of aggravated identity theft. She pled guilty to one count of wire fraud in April. So Rendon received $381,000 in fraudulent PPP funds that she obtained by lying about her payroll in addition to submitting fraudulent IRS tax forms. She used a payroll processor to pay herself, friends, and family members, claiming the payments were related to her job as a real estate developer. Rendon then used the COVID-19 funds to lease a 2021 Bentley, Rent a, oh. That's it. And Mike's only making that noise because he has a 2022 Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> Rent a luxury apartment, pay for cosmetic dermatology procedures, and refinish her designer shoes. During a sentencing Well, at hearing, least all that money went to very good costs. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Right. <laughs> During a sentencing hearing on August 17th, Rendon said uh, that it felt like everybody was doing it, and she was just jumping on board. After being caught, Rendon said she realized her victims weren't faceless entities of the U.S. government, but countless individuals and businesses who suffered an unparalleled period of economic distress. So... The federal government is now, you know, cracking down on those people that uh, that fraudulently took those COVID-19 relief funds. Of course, many businesses, right. it was a legitimate need. But uh, right. I guarantee you there were hundreds of thousands of cases of bullshit. Well, that's the most yeah. extreme example I, I have. Uh, see, I know uh, quite a few people that have businesses that uh, that because of the nature of the business – they were going to be able to maintain their employees and be able to maintain their business because they weren't going to see a sharp drop in business because of, you know, whatever the unique nature of their business, but that the way that the government handled everything, you could still apply for PPP in that case. And in that case, they'll never find you because you weren't, you weren't lying. Yeah. I mean, you, you have those right. employees. You did keep those employees. You didn't necessarily know what business pressures you were going to fall under under the pandemic. But this one, I mean, to go out and do uh, what was it besides the uh, besides the uh, Bentley? She uh, oh man, she she could rent in a luxury apartment. She dermatology procedures, all kinds of things. You're a real estate developer. I, I I don't know. I mean, yeah. that's that's pretty sad. Yeah. Well. I hope she gets what's coming to her. Uh, you know, stupid real people needed that money. But that's right. Uh, let me take you to a disturbing story, and it's out of Kentucky. A woman who was chained to the floor of a Kentucky home like a dog was eventually set free by police after two days. Neighbors reported the distressed screams of the victim on August 16th and Louisville Metro Police officers were forced to climb through the second floor window of the Kentucky property to help the woman being held captive. Officers used a hatchet that they found to break the chain free from the floor and helped her outside before she was treated by the emergency services. And it's all captured on video, y'all. Officers tried to break into the building by kicking down the doors and windows, but the home was completely barricaded. The unidentified woman managed to break through the window of the second floor room she was being held in, and the neighbor shouted, I got a ladder, and footage shows the officer climbing up towards the room. He climbs over broken glass and enters the filthy bedroom before grabbing the chain from the woman's neck. He tries to calm her down. The woman had a chain around her neck, which was secured by a mask lock, and that chain was bolted to the floor with screws, police said. She has heard crying in the video and apologized to the police officer and tells him the man who locked her up kept the key on his keychain. Two officers used the hatchet they found in the home to break the chain free of the floor. 
The woman was in shock and continued to shake and cry as bolt cutters were used by firefighters, firefighters to remove the lock chain from her neck. She was helped outside and treated by emergency service. Um, Moises May, 36, was arrested two days after the woman who he shares a child with was rescued. May was charged with kidnapping, intimidating a participant in a legal process, wanted endangerment, assault, terroristic threatening, and harassment. He restrained her in the bathroom and cut off most of her hair with a machete, according to the arrest yeah. report. Right? Winter. She... She left the same night and returned the next day to collect her stuff, which is when he locked her in the room. You're going to get it tonight. I told you next time you leave and don't come home, I'll kill you, May is accused of telling her. He is said to have stormed out of the home after chaining her to the ground and taking her cell phone so she couldn't call for help. May is facing a slew of charges, including kidnapping, sexual assault, and numerous other ones, and but he hadn't been in her a plea yet, y'all. Wow, crazy! I saw the uh, I saw the video, the uh, body cam video of this, and this guy had that house so completely barricaded that the cops, right. uh, the cops circled the entire uh, bottom of the house, first floor. Yeah. There was no way in for them. Doors, yeah. windows, everything boarded up, closed up. Uh, they couldn't get through them. The only way they were able to get in the house is that she was actually able to, even though she was chained to the floor, she was able to kick out a window on the second yeah. floor and they were able to get a ladder and get up to that second window and then get in there. And I'm, I mean, this guy, when you say chained, I mean, this guy had her bolted to the floor. Right. Unbelievable. Wow. It, it, you know what else is disturbing? Not only do they have a machete to cut off her hair, but they found a hatchet inside to, to chop her free from the floor. I imagine he was going to have, you know, who has a hatchet inside their home in Louisville, Kentucky? Right? So I imagine he's going to. Yeah, uh, she didn't. Chop her she off didn't have. Uh, she didn't have a lot of days left. No way. No, she didn't. And a hero cop, Jim. That could have been for your selection on hero cops, right? Yeah. Uh huh. But anyway. All right, that's it on that one, boys. Wow. Well, let's go to the land of the strange, Pennsylvania, where mm. let's see we've we've had we've talked about this in several episodes. We've had people in their sixties commit murder. I think we had somebody in their seventies last yeah, week. Yeah, we had yeah. we had somebody that was seventy two. Today we got a guy that's eighty three years old. Eight three. An 83-year-old Coatesville, Pennsylvania man faces murder charges after allegedly shooting and killing his roommate after an argument over a dog. Chester County DA Deb Ryan's office said that Yuli Hines was arrested and charged with first and third degree murder. Woody, first and third degree. Uh, I've heard that before uh, on the show, but I don't, I don't know why you get charged with two separate counts for the same crime. Okay. Uh, possession of an instrument of crime and possession of a weapon. According to the allegations, the Coatesville police responded to a residence at about 8.40 a.m. on Saturday after getting a report of a shooting. When they arrived, they found the victim, later identified as 61-year-old Keith Boggs, on the front steps and unresponsive. Boggs appeared to have one gunshot wound in his upper left chest area, uh, police initially reported, and he did not have a pulse. Inside of the house, officers heard the only other occupant, a juvenile female, screaming as the emergency crews responded to the scene. Officers also saw bloody shoe prints starting a few feet from the front door, along with actual drops of blood. Boggs was taken to the area hospital, where he was ultimately pronounced dead, Investigators spoke to the 911 caller who said he heard two gunshots before seeing the feet of the victim on the ground. Detectives reviewed video footage and it showed Hines and Boggs at the residence just before the shooting. When investigators spoke to a witness later that afternoon at the police station, the witness said Hines lived at the home with Boggs 
one additional roommate and that roommate's child. That explains the presence of the kid when the cops got there. The witness told investigators that she was reading her Bible in the front living room of her residence when she overheard the argument between Boggs and Hines. It was about their dog. She then heard Boggs take the dog upstairs. And after hearing him shut a door upstairs, Hines following up and moments later, two gunshots. And Hines uh, and Hines yelling, quote, I told you to stop effing with me. After that, the witness told investigators she heard, heard Boggs fall to the ground. And that was it. An autopsy found Boggs sustained three bullet wounds, one to the left side of the chest, one on the right side of the chest and one on the right arm. Hines is under arrest. And the, uh, the DA said this was a senseless crime that has left an entire community grieving Gun violence remains a devastating epidemic across the nation, and we send our deepest condolences to Mr. Boggs' family and friends. I wonder if he's related to Wade Boggs. Don't know. This is a little note from Ms. Jerry. The Real Life Real Crime Daily I-Team has scoured every local, state, and regional news source, but as of now, we can't find anyone with information about the argument over the dog, where the dog currently is, or whether the dog has a home moving forward. Uh, but given that you're bringing two dogs home this week, honey, do not enter these sweepstakes for this dog. Thank you. All right. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know how you're going to stay in trouble. Way bogs. I live on the <laughs> edge, Woody. It's like ever since I joined, yeah. ever since I joined the the coin boys, it's, you know, well. <laughs> you know it's, just was it coin for life or something? Yeah. Live by the coin. <laughs> <laughs> Live by the coin. Yeah. Die, die, die by the coin. Freaking coin. Yeah. yeah. That's great. <laughs> All right. Really. Hey, ladies. Are you feeling overwhelmed by hormonal changes? Well, you're definitely not alone. There are more than 1,000 hormone disruptors living in our environment right now. It's sending your food, your water, the air you breathe, the clothes you wear, your skincare products. They all mess with your hormones. Then there's the natural hormone changes your body goes through, premenopause, menopause. And while it's a natural process, it doesn't mean you have to suffer through it. The good news is you don't have to suffer through it anymore because now you have hormone harmony, a formula made only with herbal ingredients that are shown to reduce hormonal symptoms in women of all ages. Hormone harmony is not just a hormone support and supplement. It's become a phenomenon. Women can't stop talking about it on social media. A bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds. And the biggest benefit? Well, my wife says it makes her feel like her own self again. And that's what women mention over and over in the reviews. And there are over 30,000 reviews for Hormone Harmony. And for a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use code RLRC at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use code RLRC for 15% off today. That's H-A-P-P-Y-M-A-M-M-O-T-H dot com and use code R-L-R-C. Hey, it's Ryan Seacrest. Life comes at you fast, which is why it's important to find some time to relax. A little you time. Enter Chumba Casino. With no download required, you can jump on any time, anywhere for the chance to redeem some serious prizes. So treat yourself with Chumba Casino and play over 100 online casino-style games, all for free. Go to ChumbaCasino.com to collect your free welcome bonus. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. You can now take off that belt and move freely around the cabin. It is a mile high crime Monday and a man and woman were arrested after police say they stole $9,000 in cash from someone's bag after arriving at Miami International Airport. Uh, Myra Hernandez and Rosbel Sanchez were arrested Saturday on grand theft auto charges. Uh, Hernandez and Sanchez, who live in Las Vegas, had arrived at Miami Airport on a flight from Havana, Cuba. The two had exited the airport and were waiting curbside to be picked up by family when they noticed a red bag that appeared to be abandoned. 
They went through the bag and found the cash, which they removed. That's right, nine thousand bucks. When their when the family arrived, their family, they started loading the bag in the vehicle, but the bag's owner noticed, hey, wait a minute, that's my red bag. So he demanded it back. Uh, as the bag owner was going through it, he noticed the $9,000 he had was missing. It would be the first thing yeah, I'd check. You might go looking for that. And an argument ensued. Police responded and found $5,000 under a seat in the vehicle and the rest of the cash on Sanchez. And, of course, Hernandez and Sanchez were arrested and booked into jail. And, look, I've noticed that traveling, there are certain uh, lines you wait in, little spots like when you're waiting for your Uber. They'll have an Uber section. right? Mm -hmm. And people will set their rolling bag, like, right there and then – they're not even looking in the same direction as their bag because they're looking for their Uber driver and you yeah. know ample opportunity to grab grab that bag. But I can tell you, if I had nine thousand dollars, it's staying on my person. Right. Hey, if it's I got to shove it up my ass, away. it's staying on my right. person. Why <laughs> <laughs> you getting that now? That's now. it. No. Ain't no That's doubt. a good one. Did yeah, they try and? Uh, lie about the nine grand i mean they are from vegas they're headed back to vegas they could just so they, happen they, they to they have had nine grand cash on. sure they yeah. probably started to but i mean they got cameras all over the, the outside of those airports they sure would have you know it was it was obvious they yeah. probably just said and eh, we can't fight this so that was right. your my high, mile high crime you can now take yeah. off that belt and move freely around the cabin Oh yeah! Oh Time yeah! To get kinky. My favorite thing to kinky. do on Mondays is get kinky. Right, kinky. And Tuesdays and Wednesdays. So. Yeah, right. Every day, <laughs> every every day, every day that ends twice on Thursday. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so, y'all, I had another story that I was going to do, but then I was just looking this one up, and this is kind of funny, and I, I want to end it on a funny note. Um, I'll take you to Little Rock, Arkansas, and. <laughs> An Arkansas couple's evening of kinky entertainment ended with one pair of handcuffs used for fun being replaced by another used for a real arrest in, in an arrest, police said. Uh, so Dustin Taylor, 21, summoned police this week to his home in Portsmouth to remove a pair of handcuffs he told officers he and his wife had been using the previous night while doing some kinky things. Right, so this is what the official report says. So the but the couple had lost the key. So Taylor called the cops, you know, and the responding patrolman removed the handcuffs. Well, as is customary, you're going to get the person's name for the report, and you run their name. Well, but the problem with that was the computer came back with the name, and Taylor had a warrant for his arrest. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> For criminal mischief. So they arrested them. Uh, oh, they put the handcuffs went back on, but this time they belonged to an officer. And Sergeant Daniel Grubb, the spokes of uh, Fort Smith Police, expressed a measure of sympathy for Taylor. He said, I sort of wish this guy had invested in an extra handcuff key. <laughs> and, and, right. So, whatever. Uh, key crimes and. Yeah, handcuffs and sex are not really my thing, but I'm I'm damn sure going to have an extra key, right? Yeah, well, that's a a kinky, a little kinky couple there. Having a little fun and lose the the daggum key. Lose the key. And a a man got a warrant. That's terrible. Yep. Hey, and and sat around, uh, uh, the kinkiness happened the night before, so they had to sit around all night like, damn it, what are (laughs) we going to do? Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Oh, you got to call the cop. Maybe they won't know out a warrant. Wow. All right. Hey, hey that, that's your key time for Monday. Very good. I dig their style. They got some moxie there, right. too. Right. Banjo time. We're going across the pond for a little bit of dumb criminals today. 
The British police were trying to arrest Matthew Bolter, age 34, after locals complained of him assaulting three people in the Humberside area. Bolter was unwilling to go into custody without a fight, punching and kicking an officer. When a police dog was sent in by the officers to assist in the arrest, Bolter grabbed the dog and bit it on its head. Mm. Really? I'm just letting that sink in for a moment for everyone. <laughs> so it's like, what? is that the, the end of the story? The police eventually, <laughs> well, I just, when you man bites dog, is the police eventually <laughs> subdued Bolter uh, minutes later. Assaulting emergency service workers is not acceptable, and our police dogs provide vital assistance to us. They are part of the police family, Sergeant Detective Thomas Crossville of the Humberside Police said. The beloved police dog, Xander, luckily only sustained minor injuries. Thankfully, Xander quickly made a recovery and was back at work within days, Crossville said. Xander was previously nominated for the National Police Bravery Award in 2021 for his role in apprehending an armed suspect. Police said Bolter pled guilty to six offenses, calling causing unnecessary suffering to an animal, assaulting an emergency uh, service worker, uh, and uh, and two counts of of battery. So, you know, hard for me to say anything bad. I'm sorry, honey, but Xander as a dog. Okay, I, I don't know who the judges were on the 21 police bravery award, but you can't go in and let the bad guy bite you. I mean, right? Well, th- come on, that dog lo- had to lose all respect within the canine officer ranks after the other dogs found out yeah. that he got bit in the head. But regardless uh, of what happened to Xander, this guy uh, Matthew Bolter is a moron. Uh, but you know, biting a dog definitely, definitely dumb criminal. But but maybe you take it you might consider taking Xander's police bravery award from twenty twenty one away on that one. Come on. Yeah. Well that's a good one. <laughs> they stole what? That's the what? What That's they right. steal? They stole what is back, and now we're stealing meat. Oh, okay. Oh, Eleven thousand like dollars meat. worth of meat. That's a lot of meat. That's a lot That's of meat. meat. And from Tampa, Florida, we're going to take you. A Florida man was caught on camera ransacking a Tampa restaurant storage area and stealing around eleven thousand dollars worth of meat and ingredients and police are asking for the public's help to identify the suspect that's right he hadn't been caught y'all the tampa police department confirmed that on thursday august 17th at around eleven thirty, a male suspect was seen behind bayshore mediterranean grill conducting a break-in surveillance video released by police shows the male suspect used a large pair of pliers to pry the storage door open and gain access to the restaurant. He then found a black trash bag and started piling goods inside. Police are looking for your help to help solve this meat mystery, and they're asking the community to watch the surveillance footage to help them identify the suspect. So, of course, your Real Life Real Crime Daily team will post that surveillance footage of this Meat stealing bandit. Eleven thousand yeah. dollars worth, and it, it all fit That's in one a, bag. A ton like, of steak, man. I mean, yeah. it's hyper. Well, it's Mediterranean restaurant, so it could be a lot of fish too. Yeah. Well, it was. Well, they say meat. Yeah, they say meat. I don't know. Wow, that's that's. This restaurant's prices might be a bit too high. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's like, <laughs> it's like four steaks over there or something. People are going to say yeah. in Tampa, but you know, of all places, popular for strip clubs. Did you know that? More strip, <laughs> more strip clubs per look, capita I, than look, anywhere in the country. I, I may have been to really? the Mons Venus yes. at one point. Uh, the Land Strip. <laughs> no, the, the, the famous one there in Tampa was the, the Mons Venus. The Mons Venus. Look, I heard they get pretty crazy in Tampa, Florida, Woody. 
Oh, I know they do. As luck would have it, uh, a they, podcast convention is in, in Tampa, Florida next week. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that place can still the, be open. I have to search that place. Crime, crime Con was in Orlando this year. Yeah. Or is in Orlando That's this it. year. Uh, uh, we're not going. That's uh, it. So. That's your face. Oh, what? what? That's no right. Way. That's right. And that means we have come to an end to our episode. Any final thoughts, Woody? Uh, final thoughts, um, rrescue.org, y'all. Yes. Do something, say something, and, and, and yeah, and we human love all y'all. trafficking. Okay. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. And we love all y'all, and we even tolerate Ago most of the time. What kind of idiots leave? I have even thought about this. I had to look up Mons Venus. It's still operating, apparently. <laughs> um, but there are there are 87 reviews here, like who goes? They go to a strip club. Here's I mean, oh, he, he, wait, a reasonable entry entry fee from what I am used to. Great atmosphere, <laughs> and, great atmosphere, and friendly girls will return. That guy gave him five stars. Hey. Oh, here's a guy who only gave him one star. Mons Venus in Tampa, Florida disappoints with a one star rating. The exorbitant prices here are simply outrageous. Making any wait, I have to read more. Come on. Oh shit! Now it's trying to. Link me somewhere. I don't want to go. Uh, another <laughs> one star. Twenty five dollar cover plus one drink minimum. Twenty five dollars. Dancers asking what? forty to sixty dollars per dance. Yes, you read it correctly. Plus eighteen dollars for the booth. <laughs> what was this guy trying to do? <laughs> I don't know what Faraz was doing there. Yeah, he, he went had, in there with like five bucks got, and couldn't believe he spent it. In it's two so seconds. funny. You got that. And then you have the next guy says safe, reasonable entry fee. <laughs> If you're looking for black or more shapely women, this oh, is not God. the place. I guess this is a this is an all white uh, cabaret here. I don't know. Overall experience, great. So lots of reviews there for Mons Venus. Lots of happy customers. Mons Venus. Oh wait, Jordan G. <laughs> Dog shit dancers with horrible attitudes. Overpriced <laughs> and middle of the pack at best. It's fun if there's nothing else available otherwise. <laughs> and that's your. That That's your strip club tonight's. review, our new segment on Real Life Real Crime Daily. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Until good next time, I'm Jim Chapman. I'm Woody Everton. And I'm Mike Agavino. Your host of Real Life Real Crime Daily. Peace. Peace. Lori Wise and the Aglets. Hey, it is Ryan Seacrest. There's something so thrilling about playing Chumba Casino. Maybe it's the simple reminder that with a little luck, anything is possible. ChumbaCasino.com has hundreds of social casino-style games to choose from with new game releases each week. Play for free anytime, anywhere, for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply.